to everyone on this Pentecost Sunday, uh, a time in the church where I usually encourage people to wear the colours of fire, the, the reds and, and the yellows and, and whatever fire, orange as well. So we have some orange here today. So welcome and thank you for joining us this evening. The service is going to be what we call an anti-communion. It, uh, it's a communion that goes up so far through, but we do not share the communion at this time because of the COVID restrictions. But we worship in spirit and in truth. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in us the fire of your love. On page 185, page 185, We'll use the sentences from Easter Day through Pentecost. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The, the Lord, Lord is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. May his grace and peace be with you. May, May we fill our hearts with joy. And we'll sing the hymn, Come Down, O Love Divine. Continue now with the collect for today, the day of Pentecost. Almighty and ever living God, who fulfilled the promises of Easter by sending us your Holy Spirit and opening to every race and nation the way of life eternal, keep us in the unity of your Spirit that every tongue may tell of your glory through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We're now going to hear the word of God and Derek will do our first reading.
This lesson is written in the second chapter of the Acts of the Apostles, reading verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly a sound came from heaven like the rush of a mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them tongues as of fire, distributed and resting on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in his own language. And they were amazed and wondered, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language, Parthians and Medes and Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belong to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians, we hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty words of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? With others mocking, said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these men are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Yea, and on my men servants and my maid servants, in those days, I will pour up my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heaven above, and signs on the earth beneath, blood, and fire, and vapour of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before the day of the Lord comes, the great and manifest day. And it shall be that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The hymn, Spirit of the Living God, which is 647 in your hymn books, and is the second verse or the second text we sing. <laughs> The psalm for today is Psalm 104, verses 25 to 35. O Lord, how manifold are your works! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the great and wide sea, with its living things, too many to number, creatures both small and great. They move the ships, and there is that Leviathan 
which you have made for the sport of it. All of them look to you to give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand and they are filled with good things. You hide your face and they are terrified. You take away their breath and they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit and they are created. And so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in all his works. He looks at the earth and it trembles. He touches the mountains and they, and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please him. I will rejoice in the Lord. We will now say the prayer. O, o God, God of, of eternal light, light heaven and earth, earth are the work of your hands, and all creation sings your praise and beauty. As in the beginning, by your Spirit, you gave life and order to all that is, so by the same Spirit, redeem us in all things, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And Karen will read the second reading. A reading from 1 Corinthians, chapter 12, verses 3b to verse 13. And no one can confess Jesus is Lord unless he is guided by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit gives them. There are different ways of serving, but the same Lord is served. There are different abilities to perform service. But the same God gives ability to everyone for their particular service. The Spirit's presence is shown in some way in each person for the good of all. The Spirit gives one person a message full of wisdom, while to another person the same Spirit gives a message full of knowledge. One and the same Spirit gives faith to one person, while to another person he gives the power to heal. The Spirit gives one person the power to work miracles, to another the gift of speaking God's message, and to yet another the ability to tell the difference between gifts that come from the Spirit and those that do not. To one person he gives the ability to speak in different tongues, in strange tongues, and to another he gives the ability to explain what is said. But it is one and the same Spirit who does all this. As he wishes, he gives a different gift to each person. Christ is like a single body which has many parts. It is still one body, even though it is made up of different parts. In the same way, all of us, whether Jews or Gentiles, whether slaves or free, have been baptized into the one body by the same Spirit, and we have all been given the one Spirit to drink. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gradual hymn is Breathe on Me, Breath of God, 649.
The Lord be with you. And also also with you. you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory Glory to you, you, Lord Lord Jesus Jesus Christ. Christ. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of Christ. Praise Praise to you, you, Lord Lord Jesus Jesus Christ. Christ. chimes inside of St. Luke's today. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Calm us down, Lord. Calm us way down. So many voices clamor for our attention that we've become confused. Calm us down, Lord, so we can hear your voice. I was actually going to sing right at this point, and I think uh, it's not the right tune that they're playing. (laughs) So I'll just wait a moment. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear church, happy birthday to you. No, I haven't lost it, it is kind of crazy times, but um, today is the day that Pentecost is considered to be the birthday of the church. The church, given the power of the Holy Spirit to go out and do God's work. The early peoples back then went out and they gave the good news to all people. It must have been exciting in those days, an excitement that perhaps we've lost today because, well, we're in today's days. But once things settled in and the church did begin to grow, that early church known as the Way, came a difficult time, a time of persecution. But you know, those early Christians, they persevered. They rose up above that because their faith and their belief was strong. They could face anything from the lions in the Colosseum to storms at sea and whatever faced them, they could do it because it was the best thing that had ever happened to them. God among us. Life was different and wonderful. And there was no fear of death, no fear, because they trusted that in death, they would be with their Savior and their Lord. And they grew, they grew big time. People throughout the Mediterranean area and and that Middle East area, growing in numbers daily. Non-Christians noticed what was happening. How these Christians loved each other. They loved even the people who weren't Christian. 
They shared things in common, they helped each other, and they helped others. And they must have made a really good impression because Emperor Constantine made it the state religion. And in those days there were many gods and many religions. So to say that Christianity is the one was a big thing. But from then on, things changed. The new church and the church through the centuries had power. They had power to say what was right and what was wrong. And they had power even to go to war in the name of Christ the Lord. The power Christians wear and are given is the power of the Holy Spirit, the power to do good, to bring peace, harmony, joy, hope, love. I've said these things before. All good things, full of light and love. It's kind of like a conspiracy. Those early Christians conspired together to bring new life to the world. They couldn't stop talking about it. But the word conspire, conspire, means to breathe together. Take a breath. Yes, take a breath. We have just conspired together. Even though we're not close to each other, we are still breathing together. Earth science teaches us that our planet is enwrapped with an atmosphere and inside is all the air that we've got and ever had, kind of recyclable. All the air that's been breathed since time began. So when Jesus breathed his last on the cross, that breath he breathed on them all around. And he breathed on them again in the upper room when he said to the disciples, Receive the Holy Spirit. Those breaths of Jesus are still with us today because it's all the air we have is going on and on down to us. On the day of Pentecost, something powerful, something was unleashed. And it must have sounded like quite the racket. Wind and fire and all those people with their various languages babbling away. Confusion and, and craziness. But is it time now for us to start a conspiracy? Conspiracy. Do you hear the word Spirit in the word conspiracy, breathing and spirit together. I usually caution people when we pray, Come, Holy Spirit, be careful what you pray for. Be careful. Because when Holy Spirit enters in, things happen. It's kind of like the song. Great things happen when God mixes with us. We'll have to sing that one down the road somewhere, maybe soon. Those who allow Holy Spirit to work in them and through them speak and act like their Lord Jesus. And great things happen. I get to wondering, what do people really think about Holy Spirit? What do you think about what do you believe about Holy Spirit? What do you believe about God? Do you still believe that God can do wonders today? Or perhaps you might even think that God is just getting tired and all our prayers are empty words. Or perhaps you are anticipating that this ugly virus might be a way that God can work among us. How this virus 
is bringing people together in different ways. Perhaps God's Holy Spirit is allowing us to come to the realization that we really do need each other all around God's earth with these breathing masses working. We work for each other. Across the world, they're probably picking bananas off a tree so they can package them up and ship them to other places. That's just a small for instance. Our fish has been going down south for a long while and now to the Far East. We need each other. God is at work in this, whether you realize it or not. We need each other. We breathe the same air. We breathe the Holy Spirit. I've used some of this, what I'm going to say, from the Quaker pastor, I've used it before, called Philip Gully. You see, Christ came to turn the world upside down, and it, needs turn, it is being turned upside down again. So perhaps this is the conspiracy now, where we conspire together to breathe new life into our church. But Philip Gully says things like, Jesus is a model for living more than an object of worship. Hmm. Gracious behavior is more important than right belief. Peacemaking is more important than power. These are some of the things he points out that is true Christianity. And in our time, we need to go back, perhaps to our roots as children, when we were taught some things, and ponder, is that what Jesus is calling us to be doing today? Or to listen to our hearts and minds and spirits and say, lead on, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. I'm going to pray the blessing of the Holy Spirit. Close your ears, cover your eyes if you don't want to receive this. Receive now the Holy Spirit. You are sent out by the Son, who was sent out by the Father. Go and carry the peace of God wherever Holy Spirit leads you. Amen. We continue now in the Nicene Creed on page 188. Let us confess our faith as we say, We, we believe, believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through whom all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. 
The prayers of the people is a litany, a Holy Spirit litany, and Emma and Owen are going to do that. And, and as we invite them to do this, we hold in our prayers today also the families of the crew from the Sarah Ann or the St. Lawrence. May the Holy Spirit gather them and comfort them and give them all that they need at this time. And may the Lord build his church with the fire of his Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Let us pray to God, the Holy Spirit, saying, Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, creator, and renew the face of the earth. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, counselor, and touch our lips that we may proclaim your word. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, power from the high. Make us agents of peace and ministers of wholeness. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, breath of God, give us life to the dry bones of the exalted age and make us living people holy and free. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, wisdom and truth, strengthen us in the risk of faith. Come, Holy Spirit, come. We continue now with our confession and absolution on page 191. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what you have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. My sisters and brothers in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also with you. And we share the peace as we've been doing. <laughs> and this time Barbara is playing the organ part. She can <laughs> share it with us. The hymn for the offertory is in the songbook. Excuse me. They'll know we are Christians by our love. And once again, this is a good one for today, Pentecost. And we're going to omit the, the verses with the walking hand in hand right now. And, but we're, we're getting close to being able to do this. So they'll know we are Christians by our love. And again, we give you thanks for the offerings that you are, you're getting into your church, churches. And uh, may God bless you for that, to keep the work of the church going. Thank you.
Giver of life, receive all we offer you this day. Let the spirit you bestow on your church continue to work in the world through the hearts of all who believe. And we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. cannot receive physically the bread and body of our Lord, we receive him in spirit and in the act of spiritual communion, which will be posted on Facebook for you and in the newsletter that will be coming out the week so we can say it together in the future. Lord Jesus, I, I believe, believe that you are, are truly present, present in the, in the Holy, Holy Sacrament. sacrament. However, However, since, since I, I cannot now receive your sacramentally, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself with you and embrace you with all the affections of my soul. Let me never be separated from you. Let me live and die in your love. Amen. And we pray as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And as a blessing. Go now into the world, knowing the life God has placed within you. It is a reason for hope. God's promise is alive in you. God's love is breathing in you. And the world is changing with each and every breath you take. Go and birth Jesus in the world that all may be turned right side up and upside down. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. There probably are a couple of notices. We, as I said, we're trying to, not trying, we are putting out a newsletter. And for those who do not have um, email we will be hand delivering to the folks we know perhaps would like the hard copy and if you'd like the hard copy you just have to call and ask and so we'll leave probably won't go through all of it because on the newsletter all the other information is there is there anything else we need um, if we're good we're um we thought we'd be warm today uh, next week we're we live in hope <laughs> we live in hope but I, i'm lucky enough here with Joyce brought one of them either. <laughs> so we're grateful and thankful for that. We're grateful and thankful for you. Stay, stay, stay safe, my friends, and God bless you. As we close, we're going to have um, Wayne and Charlotte sing, I call it one of the lighter side uh, songs for this time of the year. I marvel at the wisdom of my Lord.
Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Mm -hmm. 